What has drawn me to this collection specifically is because of the muse that Maria has used. I mean, that rhymed, didn't mean it to. Because, you know, if Marlene already epitomizes the feminine, the uber feminine and the uber masculine, imagine how that is then mirrored into Maria's collection. But not only does she do that, she goes one step further. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Cara and I'm from London. I vlog about all things fashion related with a guilty pleasure on the luxury end of it. Fashion is my therapy, it's my natural high. So if you can relate and would like to indulge with me, then like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell and follow me on our fashion fix together. Right guys, I hope you're all keeping well. Today's a little bit of a different one. I wanted to sit down with you and basically obsess about the new collection from D. It is known as Fall 2024 and it's launching on the 18th so by the time this goes out hopefully we're just around the corner from it and I just wanted to sit down because I love talking about fashion as you have already seen but what I tend to do is talk to you about fashion after it's delivered when it's in a store or what the trend might be or how it looks on me but what you really haven't seen is the other side which is understand the collections from behind the scenes so not just when the collection has launched let's Let's go and have a look. Of course I appreciate that we have a lot of subbies who love to see me try on those products but what I actually do behind the scenes in my profession is live, breathe, eat, sleep and repeat fashion from the catwalks, from the concepts. You know what I love about fashion is the attention to detail. I mean we're all human at the end of the day so all of the directors that head up these fashion brands on luxury level, those are the creative directors that start the fashion trends coming right down into high street fashion so for me where I also encompass high street fashion in what I do it's all very important to understand where inspiration has come from from the concept of the collection so this is going to be quite a chatty vlog so if you enjoy your chatty ones then I hope you enjoy this and also this is very specific to Dior I am going to completely obsess with you on the fall collection with all of that said grab yourself something comfy and sit down and relax and let's start indulging in fall 24. Right guys I hope you're sitting comfortably because we've got a lot to pack through and I just want to get into this. I have got so much I want to talk about so I hope you are going to enjoy this chatty one today. So starting with the fact that the collection went live just yesterday it's been festering in my mind since then so at one o'clock in the morning in the UK I was there watching it on Instagram and YouTube getting two different angles. It went live from the Brooklyn Museum. I mean what a venue it's the home of feminist art and I just wanted to talk to you about my thoughts about it before I get into my favourites because one thing about me is I love the stories behind a collection. It's not just, oh, let me see the new bar jacket, oh, let me see how the jeans fit on my figure. Those are things that I do afterwards once the collection is in the boutiques for you to buy and feel and try on. But what I love is investing the time in the attention to detail and work that a creative director has done. You know, we're all human at the end of the day, but the genius of these directors they plan their collections probably years ahead I don't know how long Dior particularly Maria plans her collections but I'm sure she is picking up inspiration everywhere she goes to formulate her next collection and what I loved about this one it's all centered upon two cities that are close to my heart Paris and New York it makes me realize that we only really had Monsieur Christian Dior alive healthy and well doing his thing sketching and creating magic with his collections for just 10 years. You know his first collection The New Look went live in 1947 and then he passed away in 1957. When you see all of his successors how they have embodied his history and the heritage it's the heritage of a brand that really really makes me tick. I love attention to detail and I don't just pay attention to the current print of the season and that's that. I love to understand prints and why a director might have resurrected a print or even done their own adaptation on a print. So specifically to Christian Dior's first collection in 1947, he created his very first collection, which was known, actually dubbed, by 
by an American editor, Carmel Snow, who was at the time the chief editor for Harper's Bazaar. So back in 1947, she was the most powerful fashion editor of the time. And I'm just going to quote what she says. She said in 1947, after his debut show, it's quite a revolution, dear Christian. Your dresses have such a new look. And there it remained that that debut collection was called the new look. With the bar jacket, the cinched in waist, that is when Christian Dior started his handwriting, the hourglass silhouette that accentuated the women's figure, tighter waist and the X shape of the female figure. And the reason I mentioned the history there is because I don't think everyone really will remember that we've only actually had Christian Dior himself for just those 10 years. So many other creative directors, Gabrielle Chanel for example, have had decades on Dior. So when I saw the collection on Tuesday, it made me dive back into the past just to understand once again how the concept of his original collections back then has played such an important role in Maria's collection today. And the reason I talk about the history there is because for me it's very important. When I saw the collection on Tuesday and I saw that Maria's muse heavily inspired her collection is Marlene Dietrich, the 1920s to 19, well she lived till she was age 90 so let's not count all the decades on this channel, but from the legendary actress and singer Marlene Dietrich I started to delve back into my knowledge and the history of Dior and I just wanted to highlight that, that he, we only had him for 10 years but imagine how much he did in those 10 years charting his connection with Marlene. You know, I'm, I'm a huge film noir fan. I love my films anyway, but I particularly love films from the olden days. I love nothing but a black and white noir. We can talk about that separately if you like, but specifically about Marlene Dietrich and Dior. They were lifelong friends. They made a connection back in 1946. Not only was she a huge fan of his designs, but they were very good friends. And when he created his first collection in 1947, Marlene was 46. And I remember that similarly to Chanel when she came back and made her comeback aged 70 and started the Chanel tweed suit, I mean wow. When Marlene discovered Dior, she was 46, you know, and she's already had her heyday in the 20s. 27 years later now, she is seeing this new look and she completely became one of his largest customers and friends. There's a great story. little history lesson on film that is connected to Dior. Marlene Dietrich was approached by Alfred Hitchcock for the film Stage Fright and that was in 1949 so just imagine, this is why I keep harping back to the fact we only had Dior himself for 10 years. Imagine he was only two years in since he debuted his first collection in 1947 and he's being approached by Marlene Dietrich to design her costumes for a film. Now let me just lead into this story as quickly as I can but it is a lovely story so I don't want to rush it. I did say this would be a chatty one. Now paint the picture for you. We're now in 1949. Spring Summer Collection is being designed by Dior and Marlene Dietrich who is now his very close friend contacts him and says I've been offered a job as the lead actress Charlotte Inwood from Stage Fright by Sir Alfred Hitchcock. As someone who absolutely adores Alfred Hitchcock, please go and see it. If you haven't then we're talking on the same wavelength. Marlene has basically said I want you to design all of my costumes. So she takes that to Hitchcock and Warner Brothers and of course you know it's Dior. It's not going to be cheap is it? There was resistance between Hitchcock and Warner Brothers so she delivered her very famous line which is no Dior, no Dietrich. I mean when a woman of power says that and Hitchcock wants you as your lead actress what are you going to do? You're going to say yes, aren't you? Apparently they negotiated a deal with the costumes, with the House of Dior. And the piece de resistance of that story is when you look at Stage Fright, you will see Marlene. Now we're going to talk about Marlene briefly in a moment as well. Or actually not briefly at all. We're going to talk about Marlene properly in a moment. Marlene Dietrich not only wears the beautiful gowns that she and Dior designed, apparently she would actually choose the fabrics and the colours with Dior and send them to London for Hitchcock and Warner 
Warner Brothers to see before they put them into work. Obviously, it's his film. So when you see that film, or if you want to rewatch it, I'm rewatching it on Saturday. That's that's done. You will see a balance of Dietrich wearing Dior's gowns and Dietrich wearing Dior's suits. Now we're going to get into Dietrich now. In fact, grab a little cup of tea, reboil the kettle, and I'll be back. Right guys, let's talk about Maria Grazia Curie's muse of the collection, Marlene Dietrich. Now, if you are a film buff like me, you will know the ins and outs of this already, but if you don't, then bear with me, let me introduce you to Marlene. So Marlene, she lived a very long life, 90 years old, she passed away in 1992. She was a legendary actress and a singer and two of my particularly favourite films of hers not only is Stage Fright but it's also Witness for the Prosecution. Now if you don't know about Marlene, the very simplest thing to tell you is she was not only an uber feminine beautiful glamorous woman who loved to wear glamorous dresses and exude her femininity but she would wear men's suits men's tailoring she would pair trousers with shirts she'll put a cigarette in her mouth wear a hat she'll cross her leg like a man would cross his legs so she did push the boundaries and remember we're talking 1940s which is very much pre and post war so pre war you were expected to be wearing a dress you were expected to be wearing very feminine elegant clothes but Marlene pushed the boundaries and totally loved wearing menswear or men's suiting and as Stage Fright shows you she did wear suits designed by Dior and what I love about how Maria has picked Marlene as her muse takes the history and heritage of Christine Dior's new look and era from the late 40s and brings it right to the front of the fore now 2024 we're in and makes it new and fresh mixing in Maria's personal love of androgynous fashion and menswear and masculinity with the femininity of Christian Dior and by picking the muse of Marlene Dietrich she herself epitomizes the vision that Maria has for fall 2024. I think what has drawn me to this collection specifically is because of the muse that Maria has used. I mean, that rhymed, didn't mean it to. Because, you know, if Marlene already epitomizes the feminine, the uber feminine and the uber masculine, and she juxtaposes that within a film such as Stage Fright, imagine how that is then mirrored into Maria's collection. But not only does she do that, she goes one step further. So we've already talked about about Kristen Dior and Marlene Dietrich and the history and the fusion of their friendship and how important Dior was to Marlene and then paired back the importance that Maria places on Marlene for her current collection. But let's talk about the importance that I think Maria has placed on Paris and Parisian chic and New York and Americana. So keeping with the timeline in 1947, if you imagine now Christian Dior has gone to New York, he's wowed the chief editor of Harper's Bazaar, then that's going in all the tabloids and everyone is hearing about him now in America. He's flying back to Paris and he's now working on his next collection, but what do you think he's now got in his head? The Americana influence, the streetwear, the relaxed dressing, the importance of sportswear, you know, wearing your clothes with a little bit more of a dress down approach, but still looking incredibly chic. That's the notion of where he then took his inspiration and bringing in the American influence. And what I love about Maria bringing it back full circle into her current collection for fall 2024 is she has come full circle taking the heritage of Christian Dior's new look, the heritage of Christian Dior's American influence, the muse of Christian Dior's friend Marlene Dietrich. I mean how many nuances can you have that makes this collection so fresh? And that's why I keep thinking about fall 2024. There's so many preconceived ideas that you should dress a certain way when you go to a certain city. Of course, the notion that Paris is very chic and New York is very street and cosmopolitan, you know, you could say there's beauties in every city. So by fusing two very different cities together in one collection is what I loved about this collection. And we are going to get into Maria's vision now and her pieces and my favourites on the next leg. So grab something else to drink and I'll see you in a minute. 
I've given you a brief history lesson. I hope you're still with me. You know, I love talking, as you can see, on fashion, especially heritage fashion and what it means to today. So Maria Grazia Curie, she's taken the Americana influence, mixed it with Parisian chic, the beauty of Paris, and she has created her own, in my opinion, her own new look for Dior. And I love it. I think it's great. I think the current collection is wearable. It's timeless. There are so many pieces I'm thinking of right now that I could wear. If you haven't already seen it have a look at it put on youtube and enjoy because it's all about the journey that you will be taken on this and i'm telling you this fresh out of my own head let me just remind anyone who's watching this i don't get paid by dior to speak about dior this is not an advert in any way whatsoever this is just someone who absolutely loves fashion the brand and what they mean for fashion i have a curvy figure and i think the handwriting really sits well with me and i just love new york and paris let me try and narrow it down down to my top 10 favourites because otherwise this vlog will be forever long. Right guys so this is the final part of the vlog. We are now going to look at my top 10 favourite looks of the collection plus two extra wild cards and I'll explain why in a moment. But the beauty of this collection for me, if I haven't already said it, is I feel that Maria Grazia Curie is on a moment with this collection. To me this is probably, should I say it, this could be her best collection to date for me and I think that she has effectively celebrated a fusion between Dior's love of Paris and New York and brought it into such a fresh vibe and I think if you are a New Yorker, if you're a Londoner, if you are overseas, wherever you are, there are so many pieces from this collection that you can look back on and say, I can wear that now five years ten years down the line it's so wearable and I'm going to talk to you now with my top 10 so let's go right guys so we're going to start with number one now this list is by no means in terms of one is the favorite and 10 is the least favorite I'm just picking as I'm going 10 of my favorite looks because I'd like to share with you what I like and why I like it why not but I am going to start with number one having said all of that actually number one is my most favorite look this look opened the show and before I even knew it was opening the show I had seen the lookbook the preview of what will be going live on Tuesday a few days before this is the take that I would say is where Maria has made it fresh new it's an ode to the past it's ode to the mods it's ode to New York the double-breasted beatnik peacoat I mean who doesn't love a peacoat this is in leather with a lovely high collar with epaulets on the arms I mean I think it's beautiful the complete look from head to toe let's go from the top the cap beautiful very Parisian very New York in my opinion the leather jacket we've just talked about and I actually have been enjoying the placement prints from Dior as you would have seen at Paris Fashion Week you've got the Miss Dior collection resurrected from 1967 with the Miss Dior print on the trench coats for example and here you've got some tights which has New York and Paris on it I am so all over these it's such a statement and we have to dive right in to the bag. This is the saddle bag with the most beautiful John Galliano newspaper print. <sighs> I'm getting Carrie Bradshaw vibes, Sex and the City vibes, when she wore that infamous dress. This is by far my favourite piece from the entire collection, although I do want to see it in real life because it is technically a white bag and we do have to be careful unless we are going to be wearing it like how the model is holding it and not putting it on a black leather jacket. We don't want colour transfer but this bag to me is the piece de resistance for the collection. And now look number two, I'm putting three dresses together because the category of what I love as look two is the black dress which is the key feature of the collection so showing you the first one absolutely love this with the deep V this is in ode to the abandoned dress from the 1940s Dior's original dress and it's also in homage to Marilyn Monroe who also wore a very iconic dress sadly her photo shoot was also in the same year that she passed away 1946 going back to the collection so you've got three beautiful 
beautiful black dresses. I think they all are equal as they are standing side by side. There isn't one that's any less than the other, so love those. Now look number three I love because this is also a heritage print that Maria has resurrected. This is an ode to the US bicentennial year in 1976 where this print was originally on a Dior scarf. So Maria has resurrected the print and put it in street style New York sportswear. I mean look at it, it's so cool. With the wide leg trousers and the sneakers, Maria herself said she would look and observe New Yorkers and very often you will find a New Yorker wearing her sneaks for her day to day and she'll probably have her high heels slung over her bag ready for the evening so I love this look and then look for keeping with the sportswear theme I just think this is so cool it's so wearable you don't have to wear it as top to toe I love how Maria has put the Dior oblique print into this oversized sportswear anorak style top for the girls who love the Dior anoraks this would be great for you because you can see there's a drawstring on the hem and I'm pretty sure there'll be a Christian Dior band going alongside the side seam with the elastic trim on the neck I think that's elastic anyway and I do love these trousers the thing is for me I'm too short to ever wear these because if you look at the bottom there's a split so unless I could probably get this altered but I have been looking at these styles for a while so I love this I think it's so fresh and then keeping with my favorite Favorite. This particular style is very much Marlene Dietrich. So Maria did epitomize some of her collections in Ode to Marlene with the shirt, the coat and tails and the shorts. She's made it fresh and unique by putting shorter lengths with the more iconic tops to make it more current. And then I love the fluidity of this evening dress. This is all about the fringing, which reminds me of the 1940s, the golden era of film, like I've said before. And to make it even more chic is throw on one of the oversized blazers that you will see in this collection as well. This next piece, this is to me a real great move on from the bar jacket. Who wants to move on from bar jackets? Not me, but I love this because it's a four pocket fitted blazer by the looks of it. It's been cinched in with a belt and it looks like she's wearing it over a pair of shorts. I love this look. If I had the legs for this, I would so be on this. And I love how she's paired it back with these lace up, very 40s inspired espadrille high heel shoes. Right guys, number eight. Now this is my favourite print in the collection. So I've gone with Paris. You also have the New York skyline as well with the Statue of Liberty on tote bags and trench coats as well. I think it's beautiful and that's on the black base and the Paris prints are on the white base. And I just think this is so beautiful. Even the way that the model has had her hairstyle, it's very Marlene Dietrich, very in touch with the time and the era. I mean, the way that the model came out and stepped down those stairs as well with the walk and the poise. I absolutely love it. So I love this print and that's my favourite look number eight. Now look number nine, let's go with this one. I've got two left. Ooh. Now I think probably this might be quite divisive because one could argue it's just a shirt, tie and trousers. But if you haven't tried on Dior tailoring, then please try on Dior tailoring before you say that. Because as you all have seen with my numerous Dior try on vlogs, I do love me a piece of Dior tailoring, especially when it's from the 30 Montan collection. I don't know if they're going to categorize these trousers into 30 Montan, which is their essential collection of capsule tailoring. But what I loved about this is look at the waist, guys. It's so high waist. This is beautiful. And I think for someone with curves like myself, this would be lovely. I love the deep pleating on the front and I love the sheen of the fabric that's been used. I believe this will probably be wool and silk. And this shirt, I'll need to try it on to see the fit, but I'm sure it's going to have some form of new fit to their classic 30 Montan shape. And then you've got the new bag with the gold handles. And that leads me to my final 10th items. I do have to pick a New York print. We have to. If we love New York, we have to. Now, if I was to choose to buy the sportswear from this collection, I think this piece is more of a collector's item piece as opposed to your oblique print, which is from the earlier image I showed you. So I quite like that Maria's chosen to put the New York skyline on a black base. To me, it's moodier and you could easily wear this all the way through autumn winter. I think it's so easy and I love 
love that she's paired it back with that oversized hat again very Paris on her hat and very New York on the bottoms so that's my top 10 but in no particular order so this is my first wild card now why I didn't pick this as my top 10 is because there's too many to pick from but what I loved about this is I love the vintage ode to this jacket now I'm not sure if they're going to call this the bar jacket this might also just be called the fitted jacket but I love the peplum style on the hips cinched in from the waist because that extra bit of fabric known as the peplum gives you even more of a silhouette from the original Kristen Dior new look and I think that's beautiful so I've actually picked this look as wild card number one purely for that jacket and wild card and final look of the day from me on this collection is this piece here guys you know when you see this you'll see it's a leather coat it might even be called the leather trench but we need to talk about very briefly Dior's trenches now if you haven't tried on the 30 Montan trench please do if you love a trench coat I really recommend the fit of that because you can adjust it on the sides you also know that I have got the Dior wool coat with the eyelet metal work on the belt this for me is just part of that collection part of that look I love the silhouette this is original Kristen Dior with the nipped in waist and the full skirted skirt so where you've got from look number one my favorite look with the beatnik style double breasted pea coat which is so current and fresh and New York you've got this look which is very Parisian chic still in leather so you have the best of both worlds to choose from here and I also love the fact that it's been paired back with the beret the ankle socks which is sheer and the vintage shoes so this for me is very much old Hollywood and for me this collection if I could epitomize it in one sentence I will say this is history deep rooted in Parisian chic tailoring paired back and fusioned with New York City street fashion I think it's so cool so there we have it guys there's my rendition of the current season that's just gone live just yesterday so without further ado guys thank you so so much for watching let me know what did you think of my opinions on the top 10 and the two wild cards what are your favorites is it something that you'd buy into and what do you think of the fusion between Paris and New York in this one I just think it's so unique Maria has done an amazing job so hopefully I'll go and get to see it soon and I will try some bits on and show you but until then guys if you haven't already hit subscribe click the notification bell and follow me on our fashion fix together and I will see you soon bye guys take care